Song of Solomon, Chapter 2. And through that, this book, I'm going to do the best I can. Don't know much about. The Song of Solomon, Chapter 2. I am the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valleys. There it is. That's where you get it from. Because I am. Well, that's God. Exodus 3.14. That's Jesus. I am the do I am the door. I am the water of life. I am. I am. It's so plain and simple. Now the thorn, the rose, under the curse, placed upon man for their sins, is a thorny. It's got thorns. But when Jesus Christ comes and the curse is removed off the earth, that rose is going to have no thorns. And then, uh, I got a note here, I'm trying to find it. Well, I did have a note here for Sharon, but I don't see it. Okay. I, did, I made it part of the note, and then I didn't finish the note. The Lily of the Valley. You know, the valleys are the bad places. And in the bad place, the hardships of life, there's that pretty flower. And yet in valleys, we grow. Valleys where the hymns are written. Valleys is where poems are written. Valleys are where books are written. And, you know, we talk about mountaintop experiences. The mountaintops, they're too cold for lilies. They're too cold for vegetation. Matter of fact, a lot of people want to climb these mountains like Mount Everest and that. They got to have oxygen tanks. They got to be really physical fit. As a lily, there's a lily again, among the thorns. So what we have here is we have... I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Together now we have a lily among the thorns. We have Christ amongst the, the curse, man, the earth. And upon the, the, the brow of Jesus Christ was not a crown of silver and gold, it was a crown of thorns. And in Genesis chapter 3, because of the curse of man, thorns and, 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 and briars and weeds. Upon the, the, the brow of Jesus, a thorny crown, weaved. Jesus Christ is beautiful. And yet he took the nature of sin, took the nature of the curse, and buried it to the cross. So is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. A fruitful tree, a tree you can use. A tree that produces fruit, and Jesus said about the good tree, it produces good fruit. And Jesus Christ among the sons, God, 100% God, 100% man, dwelt among man, dwelt in the sin-cursed earth. Had troubles and problems and anxiety. Had the devil chasing him. I sat down under his shadow. So his shadow. This would be the this would be the the bride speaking. With great delight. Shadow from the storm. Shadow from the heat. And his fruit, there it is, was sweet to my taste. And Christ speaks about good fruit. He speaks about evil fruit. And of God, it would be good fruit. For the Christian today, the fruit is love, joy, peace, the nine fruits of the Spirit. In Revelation 22, it speaks about the fruit of the tree of life and the leaves, which is not for Christians. I've had that battle with a family member saved and, you know, his church got all involved with, you know, the, the leaves and the fruit are for the Christians. We have no more pain and sorrow and troubles and medicine needs. But when you look at all this and you look to Christ, I, I don't read the Old Testament. I, there's no Christ in it. Well, you're going to find Christ is throughout all the book of Song of Solomon. Solomon is a type of Jesus Christ. And the bride is a type of church. I don't know where they got the idea of an apple being a forbidden fruit, but it, we don't, we're not told the fruit. 
he, the, bri the bridegroom, brought me to the banquet house. Where you dine, where you feast. That would be the marriage supper of the land. Not as, and here as a Jewish, well, she's not even Jewish, but we're going to the marriage supper of the lamb. We are the bride and he's the groom. Israel will be invited as guest. Not as the bride. Israel is the bride of God. So when we look at the Song of Solomon, we look at this, this bride speaking. She says her husband is going to take her in the banquet house. Yes, Jesus Christ is going to take us in the banquet house. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Where the bride and the groom are exalted. His banner, his flag, his protection over me was love. For God so loved the world. He loved, we love him because he first loved us. Over and over. It is the love of God that <coughs> Jesus Christ left his throne. And not to be only buried in the manger born of, of the virgin. But to carry his whole life to Calvary's cross. The suffering death. He knew. Even as a baby in that, in that, uh, that manger. He knew who, who, would, who would despise him. He knew who would reject him. He knew all the hardship, trials, and trust. He just never lived them before. And he knew exactly what hour, what minute, and what second he would die. Passover. Stay me with flagons. And that's vessel for holding wine, metal, or pottery. And it was pottery, where clay, where, where, where pottery is in the hands of the potter. Comfort me with apples. Apples, they're sweet. Apple is called the, eye, the, the, the apple of God's eye is Israel, but we're looking at a Gentile colored woman. For I am sick of love. They, what the world said calls it, it's lovesick. And it's not that she's vomiting love, it's she's just, oh, she's Google eyes. And the moment when we see Jesus at the rapture, both body, soul, and spirit. You see, when we die in the Lord today, outside before the rapture, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. Our spirit goes back to God, our body stays in the grave. Our soul goes to God, absent, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But at that rapture, when we see all of us, there he is. And forever we will be. His left hand is under my head. And his right hand does embrace me. So he's laying towards the left of the bride. And he's got... He's got his hand under her head and he's got his, her, his arms around her. And I wonder where his arm would is holding her would be the very spot where Adam lost his rib for his wife. The spot where Jesus would be pierced with the iron spear. I charge you, order, commandment. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, the Jewish. You see, there's the bride and there's the Jewish. And when we go into the book of or the Gospel of Matthew and Mark and Luke, you got to rightly divide because Matthew's not written to the church. I'll, I'll hold strong to that. That's a, I mean, you can spiritually apply the passages, but doctrinally they are laid to the children of Israel, not the church. There is no church. You hear say, well, you know, they have argued when did the church start, you know, at Pentecost. Pentecost came after the Gospels. Well, they were written. Yeah, they were written after Pentecost, but the life and, and burial and death of Jesus was before Pentecost. Before there was a church. By the rose, and that's a deer. By the hinds, deer of the field. The wild animals. That you stir not up. Nor awake, second advent of Jesus Christ, my love, till he please. Don't set dates for Jesus to come. 
Let Jesus come when he will come, when the Father says, okay. There are tons of people, and there have been tons of people. They set a date. Let Jesus rest. He's sitting down right now. When he gets up for the second advent, he's got a lot of work to do. He's got to get on the horse. He's got to battle the enemies. He's got to take the throne. He's got to carry the nation of Israel into the promised land. Even when he gets up to meet us in the air as a church, eh, man, he's got a lot of judging to do. Let him rest. Because God is not going to push the rapture, push the second coming, because one man says, oh, he's going to come on uh, December 8, 2020. God ain't going to do it. Now, every day, every moment, every hour, we're getting closer and closer to the rapture. But don't further it. Let God do his own time. Because you're going to be found ashamed. Because you didn't rightly divide the word of truth. The voice of my beloved, Jesus. Behold, he cometh leaping upon mountains and skipping upon the hill. There's the rapture. There's the second coming. My beloved is like a roe, a deer, or a young heart. And he's coming, isn't he? Does it not say the voice of my beloved, he cometh leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills, and my beloved is like a roe and a heart? Yet the world has Santa Claus coming with reindeer from the north with gifts. Jesus Christ is the gift of God. There's an invitation of Santa Claus in the Bible. The Antichrist. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming. No, he's not. There's no Santa Claus. Jesus Christ is coming. And there are, and listen, I'm not speaking to the world. I'm speaking, to, there are Christian families right now that their children are being haven their self and being good because to their house, Santa Claus is coming. And Santa Claus has got the, the deer and he's got one with a red nose. We can't wait. You're not going to see him. You're not going to see no pictures. Even NORAD is going to track this mythical man. And they got everybody looking for Santa. I'm talking about the Christian household. They got looking for Christian, uh, Santa Claus, but they're not looking for Jesus. And the moment if you do come true and you say, well, son, well, daughter, let me tell you, there's no such thing as Santa Claus. And there's some families, they're not even going to tell their children that. But if you're to tell them one day, sit there, there's no Santa Claus. There's no reindeer. Well, how do you expect them to believe Jesus when you lie to him about Santa Claus? Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looking forth out the windows. And those windows are found in Genesis 7 11. The windows on high. He showed through the lattice. Have you ever seen a map? You ever see a map of the solar system? You ever see how they got it all laid up as squares? Where do you think that came from? Where do you think they get the idea of laying out latitude and longitude? No. The Bible says the heavens are like a lattice. That's, that's what lattice, little squares. You know you got that from the Bible, did you? My beloved Spank. He said to me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. There's the church rapture. Now it's out of, like I said, verse 8 is the second advent, verse 10. See, the Bible's not in chronicle order when it comes to that. There's a rapture of the church. And before the, he talks about the second advent. We're going home one day. For lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. Springtime in Palestine. The latter rain is March, April. Joel chapter 2, Hosea chapter 6, and James chapter 5. Books of the Bible and chapters of the Bible speaks about the church rapture.
and also speaks about the, the second advent. There's also a rapture in the tribulation period too. The two prophets are called up. And in the tribulation period, there is a group of people that are going to go up. The flowers appear on the earth. Springtime. The time of singing of birds has come. Springtime. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. Israel. Our land. They're in Israel. The turtle. That's a bird. Tur turtle dove. Now again, it's a Gentile bride. You can't take the type all the way. No type is 100%. Joseph is one of the greatest types of Jesus Christ, and yet he lied about his cup. Jesus Christ ain't going to lie. A prophet like unto Moses, you mean a man that murdered somebody and hid the body in the sand? No, you can't take it all the way. But you, Can I say something else? Here's a time of spring. Here's a time of Easter. Get your eyes on Easter Bunny. Get your eyes on Santa Claus. But get your eyes off God. Get your eyes off Jesus Christ. At the springtime is the event of a rapture or the second coming. I'm not going to date nothing, but there it is. The fig tree. Did not Jesus give parables of fig trees? Was not a fig tree that Jesus walked up to it seeking fruit. And there was no fruit. And he cursed it. I come to this fig tree. And I, I sought fruit, a fruit of it. Uh, there's been no fruit. Cut it down. Well let me dig around and dung it. He was talking about the nation of Israel. Now the fig leaf of Genesis chapter 3. The fig leaf is a type of self-righteous. Hide yourself of your sins of God. That fig tree represents the nation of Israel. And the, the fruit of the fig tree when Jesus was alive was not there because Israel would not produce the fruit. But it's coming a day that that fig tree will produce fruit and it will be refreshing to God. After Jesus Christ has come. The fig tree put it forth for green figs. That's not even when Jesus came. It was leaves. And I'm, I was told or I read about a fig tree at the time that Jesus came and there was only leaves. That was the time before the fruit came. The leaves on the fig tree, I read or someone told me, the fruit is to come. Here, the, the fruit is coming. And the vines, that would be grapes. Jesus said, I am the vine. You see the references. This is also the nation of Israel. I said, I can't say too much about the book of Solomon. Because I don't want to go too far. I don't want to teach false doctrine. The vine with the tender grape giveth food. I mean, excuse me, <coughs> giveth good smell. I remember when I grew up as a little boy, there was a, it was grapevines in our neighbor's backyard. And that wood, it, it, there was a, just opening a fresh bottle of grape juice and smelling that. That's what you smell. When those grapes started appearing, it was bad that they were, I don't know what was wrong with them, but they were sour grapes. You couldn't eat them. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. There's the rapture. There's a rapture in verse 10. 10 is the number of Gentiles. There's a rapture in verse 13, a, a, a number of rebellion. There's a church rapture, and there is a rapture in the midst of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is because Israel has rebelled against God and Jesus. Let's look at Revelation 14, 14. No, I got yes. Revelation 14, 14. And I look and behold a white cloud. Upon the cloud one that sat like the Son of Man, having a head with a golden crown. 
and a heart and a hand with a sharp sickle. Uh oh, harvest. Another angel came out of the temple, cried with a loud voice to him that sat in the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, reap, for the time is come the time is come for thee to reap, and the, earth, and the harvest of the earth ripe. He that sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Another angel came down to the temple, which is which is in heaven, also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had a which had power over fire, cried with a cried with a loud cry to him that with the sharp sickle, saying, Thrush in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. That's what we just read in Song of Solomon. The angel thrust in his sickle in the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. This would be the goats. The winepress was tried without the city and the blood came out of the winepress, even the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furloins. There it is. So when we come back over here to the Song of Solomon, we've got the church rapture. We've got Israel's rapture. We've got the judgment. I lost my place. There's so much going on within a few passages. You've got to rightly divide. I, I, I'm not going to rightly say verse 10 is this and verse, I'm, I'm not going to go that far. Because that could be an error. But there is a rapture in the, at, at the end of the church age. There is a rapture in the midst of the tribulation period. There is the wrath of God of Jesus Christ coming. And there is a harvest. The fig tree, verse 13 Is Israel now at the second advent? We you've got two classes of people. You got the sheep nations, and you got the goat nations. And the angels harvest at the end of the world. They gather the goats, and they're trampled by God, death. But when Jesus Christ comes for the Gentiles, there are, the goat nations are going to go off and be judged and be cast off into hell. There are sheep nation that's going to be judged by Jesus. They're going to be found faithful to the children of Israel and they're going to be allowed to come in the promised land. Are they the greats? I don't know. But I know God told Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel, he said they were very good, great, I mean, very good figs, and they were very evil, naughty figs. Here the grape gave a good smell. So there are good grapes. In Revelation 14, there are grapes that are pressed out and trampled. Oh, my dove. That are in the cliff of the rocks. Their home. In the secret place. Let me see thy countenance. Let me see your face. Let me see your joyful face. Bride says, I want to see you. That's what the church is supposed to be saying now. Let me hear thy voice. That's a prayer. I want to hear Jesus. I want to hear, come up hither. I want to hear, well done. For the sweet is thy voice, and she's talking about her husband. Now we know she's talking about Solomon, but when you spiritually apply it, it's the church supposed to be about her husband. Jesus Christ. 
Thy countenance is comely, beautiful, well, adorable. And yet there are going to be some Christians, they're not even going to know who Jesus Christ is. They believe he's Italian. He believes he looks like Charlton Heston. There are Christians out there that don't even realize their Jesus is Jewish. Take us, the foxes, the little foxes, sin. Picture sin. That spoil the vines. And that's what foxes would do. They run up and down through the vines, through the, through the vineyard, and they would cause damage by rubbing up against and gnawing and clawing at the vines, bearing, the, bearing an openness in the, in the fruit, in the vines, causing death. That's what sin does. That's what the foxes do. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes, fresh, new, growing. Got to handle properly. And go back to verse 13. The vines with tender grapes give a good smell. We're supposed to be a good smell to God. And what, what God writes about our church age today, the Laodicean church age, you make me want to vomit. We say how great, how wonderful we are. We're rich. We have no need of nothing. And God says about us, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. If you were to draw the, a picture of the church age as a vineyard, with that description in Revelation chapter 3, what would you draw it about? We are in the same condition that... that it's either Ezekiel or Jeremiah now. The church is naughty things. Evil things. Things that you can't even eat. That's what the lie is. Listen, that includes me too. I am poor, wretched, miserable, blind, and naked. I am not anybody important. I don't give God that good sense of smell. I bet you the Philadelphia church aged it with the King James Bible with missionaries that went all over the world. I would assume that it broke Jesus' heart when he ascended in Acts chapter 1 and would say goodbye to the apostles until the rapture. Yeah, when they died, they were, they were absent from the body, present with the Lord, but their bodies are somewhere buried. The foxes picture sin. My beloved is mine. Jesus Christ is mine. I am his. I belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to me. I believe what the hymn is. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. He feedeth among the lilies. Go back to chapter, go back to 2, 1 and 2. Until daybreak, second advent. The, the, the morning is the second advent. The shadows flee away. Shadow of death. Turn. That means come. Come on, my beloved. She's saying to, to Solomon, saying to the, the church, saying to Jesus, come. You think many Christians are saying that today? Jesus says go, and they won't go. You think they want him to come? Come, turn, my beloved. Be thou like a roe or a young heart, rather than the, the flying reindeer. P 
peaceful animals. Upon the mountains of Bether. We could just rightly divide. And I'm very careful. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ if I've erred anywhere. But if, if we're to rightly, correctly, by the pure inspiration of the Holy Spirit and not of man, if we were to look at each one of these chapters we're looking at, we're not going to get the date of the rapture. We're not going to get the date of the second advent, but we would get a great romantic, forget the romantic books and the, and the bookstores and the movies. No, we would get a, a, a romantic view of Jesus Christ and the church. And we ought to get the proper romantic view of the church to Jesus Christ, which is not present today. And you think, oh, my church, go to Revelation chapter 3 and read about your church age. It's called the Laodicean church age. And it goes from the angel of the church of Laodicean all the way to the end of the chapter. And don't tell me you got a good church. Don't tell me you got a good pastor. Don't tell me how well, because that's exactly what Jesus said. I'm good. We're good. And when I hear somebody say, oh, we got a great church, we got a wonderful, I just say, yep, glad to see you. And you haven't read what God says about, listen, the bride today is fornicating and adulterizing with the world and Satan today. Her dress is filthy. Her hair is mangled. I wonder what kind of picture you would draw if you would draw the characteristic of the true church today, the Laodicean church age. You would draw a whore all filthy and vile. If someone would take a picture of all the seven churches, I forget what the name, I look it up, I forget, but there's a church period that means much marriage. That's when Constantine came in and put all the Christmas trees into the church and the Easter bunnies in the church and all the idolatry of Babylon, all the filth of Rome, all the filth of Egypt. You know, you know how what you would draw a picture of that? You would draw a picture of that woman in a black wedding dress holding hands with Satan as the world pronounced you man and wife. If you were paint a picture of the church as a woman of the Philadelphia age, you would picture her as a Bible, as a suitcase going all over the world. And her suitcase that would be a King James Bible would have the stickers in the Geneva Bible. I've been to Italy. I've been to Rome. I've been to America. I've been to South America. I've been to, I've been all over the world. The sun never set upon the British Empire because the British Empire had the word of God. Oh, if somebody would draw the seven women of the churches of uh, Revelation chapter 1 to the end of chapter 3. If we were to take all seven church age periods and put it to the book of Solomon, what they're doing right and what they're not doing right. And yet very few of, one of those churches had a rebuke by God. I believe Philadelphia is one of them. There was no rebuke. I could be wrong. But we're looking at a Gentile bride to Solomon, King Solomon, historical. We're looking at a book of love. We're looking at a practical book of marriage. A sexual love only between a husband and a wife. When her husband's away, she's all, I can't wait till he gets home. Only him, I can't wait. Then the spiritual application of Christ and his church.